you, you all here. How is it that you say it's an absolutely fundamental, you have to wear it, it's a right, it's a necessity upon you, but yet you say you go through an airport and it doesn't matter if you lift it? Is it so negotiable? In France, many of the women who said we, will, we cannot go out if we don't wear it have taken it off. Can I, can I yep. just say, Selena. Uh, you know... Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are going to be checking out a video where Douglas Murray engaged in the debate uh, with some Muslim scholar on wearing the niqab in UK. I think the video is titled, Everybody Should Wear a Niqab in UK. Wow. So let's check it out. Go. But the question is whether or not, and I, I would ask this, of, of, I think, of everyone in the room who's covered, do you think that by covering your face from everyone else in society, you are exacerbating difference or, or, or making it less bad? Marion, would, would you any of you at least recognise that you, you are, are exacbating you exacerbating a difference? Is okay, this divisive? Well, first and foremost, I think we need to look at human rights, OK? In 1998, there was the Human Rights uh, Convention, OK? Under Article 9, it specifically says, we all have the freedom of expression, we have the freedom of belief, we have the freedom of so many things that, you know, like in this country, but I thought great... Mary, like, on great Douglas just, Murray's I... point, sorry, on Douglas Murray's point, that this is, you know, it, do you understand that many people feel this is divisive? It is a curtain between well, you and the rest of society. Well, to be quite frank, society. I think people are free to feel how they want. It doesn't, I don't but, care I how you feel. It's there really, is something... no, 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 wait. Really and truly, it's about my human rights. My human right, I am allowed to cover. You um, don't have to just agree. Just very briefly on Could the I... point that, that many people in the survey said that they feel unease, they feel uncomfortable, they well, feel anxious. Well, to be anxious. quite frank, I feel like that towards emos, but well, that's can I, can all right. I just point out <laughs> that, can I just right? point out, there is something fundamentally ludicrous about somebody dressed as you are talking the language of modern human rights. Absolutely. Well, to be fundamentally absolutely. ludicrous. That's, that's in... The Nakab. Douglas Murray, a prominent British political commentator and author, has been a vocal critic of the niqab, a face veil worn by some Muslim women within the context of British society. His views on the niqab reflect broader concerns about cultural integration, social cohesion and the interpretation of religious freedoms in a multicultural society like Britain. If I hated Australia, hated the Australian people, hated Australian history, hated the Australian way of life, broke into the country illegally and spent my time trying to undermine Australia. Why should I be in Australia? Why? What would I have brought the country? What benefit? What moral benefit? What financial benefit? What social benefit? The answer is you'd have brought no benefit. So why, why just hope that those people are not in large enough numbers and keep your fingers crossed and put it off for another day? I think we have to start saying very clearly, if you don't like it here, go. The niqab, a garment that covers the face except for the eyes, has been a subject of intense debate in Britain for decades. Advocates argue that wearing the niqab is a matter of personal choice and religious freedom, stemming from interpretations of modesty in Islam. On the other hand, critics like Douglas Murray contend that the niqab poses challenges to social integration and communication in public spaces. Well, with me now, are Shalina Litt, a writer and a blogger who's also a child behaviour specialist. Um, I'm also joined by Sahar al Faifi, a community activist who's also a molecular gen geneticist. And Fatima Barkatullah is the director of the Seeds of Change Muslim Women's Conference, the largest of its kind in Europe. Also here are the writer and commentator Douglas Murray, Kola Hassan, who's a lecturer and advisor on Islam, and last but not least, the writer and broadcaster Yasmin Alibi Brown. Can I just begin with you, Fatima? Yes. 56% of British people <laughs> don't really support the wearing of the full face veil in public. They don't want it. Uh, well, I think it depends on where you, where you take the poll, really, because, um, well, uh, something that I've recently launched is a project called Secrets of a Muslim Woman, and it's all about letting people know uh, why we do what we do. Because I think a lot of it is to do with not really being familiar with it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, my message to the British public is that you've got nothing to fear. You know, it's but a piece of cloth. they don't feel that, though, do they? Because <coughs> elsewhere in this po poll, a majority said they don't know how to relate you know, to you know a woman why? wearing a full face veil. I think, you know, the people who have actually interacted with women who wear the face veil, people who work with them... I mean, we're in East London today. In East London, the veil is practically, you know, normal on the streets of, of East London. Uh, people who've actually interacted and worked with women who wear the veil have absolutely no problem with it. Douglas I think Murray, it's a fear of the unknown. Douglas Murray, would you like to see the, the veil banned here? 
Well, I think like a majority of British people, I think that it should be banned in public places, particularly places like courtrooms, where it's absolutely imperative that a jury are able to ban? see the faces of uh, people who are accused. As for an overall ban, I think, look, uh, my own opinion is that niqab is highly undesirable. I think that we live in a society where people do show their faces, where huge amounts of our social interaction depend on people showing their faces. I think that it's very difficult to enforce a ban in public places like streets, but it should be a, certainly a desirable so thing to discourage its wearing. to impose a ban, but in principle you'd like to see one because you think... In Britain, in, it's unacceptable. In public buildings, in courts, in schools, and places like this, absolutely, I think a ban would be uh, very sensible. In streets and so on, I think it's difficult, but it should be societally discouraged. Fatima? No, a ban, I mean, I think it's a complete overreaction. Look, the niqab has been part of the British landscape for the last 20 odd years, okay? Muslim women have been going about their business. We've got a radio presenter here, we've got a scientist, we've got talented Muslim women who've got a lot to give to this society, who've been doing so and been very sensible about it. When we need to remove our face veils, we do it. But how do you think we get through airport Sahara, security? I mean, what, what about the fact that 56% of people are saying they don't want it here? You know what, I'm not surprised at all because when you know that high profile politicians making such uh, uh, Douglas Murray's critique of the niqab is multifaceted, influenced by his broader concerns about immigration, cultural assimilation and national identity. Murray argues that the niqab represents a barrier to social interaction and integration within British society. He perceives it as a symbol of cultural separation, inhibiting face-to-face -face communication and fostering isolation rather than integration. Murray's views are rooted in his belief that social cohesion is essential for a functioning society. He argues that visible face coverings like the niqab hinder interpersonal interactions that are crucial for building trust and understanding among communities. In his public statements and writings, Murray often highlights instances where the niqab may contribute to misunderstandings or discomfort among non-Muslims in Britain. From a legal standpoint, Murray has expressed reservations about the niqab's compatibility with British norms and values, particularly in settings such as courtrooms and educational institutions. He advocates for restrictions on wearing the niqab in public spaces where facial visibility is deemed necessary for security reasons or effective communication. Uh, uh, offensive comment, comments and big fuss about it. But I am Douglas not surprised Murray is right. the public in say British they are society, against it. We show our faces. Exactly. The British society, the fabric of the British society is respecting the public freedom. We are and British. public freedom yes. is part of it. The religious well, freedom. What about so the I've fact got the right that people to feel practice. uneasy? They said they don't know how to relate to women who have their faces covered. First of all, let them interact with us. Let us be open and engaging with them. This is number one. Secondly, 80% of communication in the world does not involve face-to-face. -face, what? Uh, uh, Twitter, what? Uh, Facebook, Facebook, Brown, Twitter, Facebook phones speak. doesn't involve face-to-face -face communications. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The issue is the problemization here. It's not existent problem I'm at sorry. All. I worked in this area for seven years, about 15 years ago, and this was not, as you said, a norm. This has been imported and exported for reasons which I, we haven't got time to go into. We live in a society, in this society, and we live in a country which is very, very complicated. And to shut yourself off as if the rest of us are infections oh, and we cutting... Shut, no, no, no. How because are we do shut not this, is the, we are, this is the meaning... We are engaged. Uh, Shalina, we are Shalina, how are we shut off? Shalina, you have said that in engaging with your elderly white neighbour who feels uneasy, sometimes you remove the veil. When you worked with children, you yeah. removed remove the yeah, veil. Isn't, isn't that we... an acknowledgement yeah. that it is difficult for people to engage with, with women who have their faces covered? Yeah, I think it is. And I also honour what Douglas Murray has just said. Mm. He couldn't actually feel comfortable and... You know, I'm making a presumption here, but you couldn't say, let's do an outright ban. And that's great, because I, I understand you look at social cohesion. It's about looking at, let's isolate it. Whose discomfort are we going to favour? Because if I lift my veil, I'm then uncomfortable. And we've favoured someone's discomfort. We live in a society. And but I don't believe in the French ban. I don't. I don't think you should do that. But why but absolutely, not? If you're opposed to it, no, if you I think, think there, there is... is a very simple way of saying and a non-racist way of saying, in public institutions, everybody, whoever they are, must show their faces. It's Muslim exceptionalism that is becoming the problem. No, it's if not. If we have the same rule for everybody, 
and at home on the streets i don't want people stopped Wait. okay we accommodate religious expression in this country you know jehovah's witnesses who don't want uh, blood transfusions uh, sikh people who want to wear turbans we we make exceptions you know in in certain situations and so look you know i really want to reach out to the public and say you've got nothing to fear from us but take up Yasmin's point. I was born in this country. I love point. this country. Take up Yasmin's point. But this is about exceptionalism. The, 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 take up Yasmin Alibi Brown's point about this is about exceptionalism. It, we, we, make, we, accom we accommodate. Murray's stance reflects broader debates about cultural identity and the role of Islam in British society. He questions whether accommodating the niqab aligns with British values of openness, transparency, and equal treatment under the law. Murray argues that while Britain values religious freedom, it also prioritizes integration and shared cultural norms that promote social cohesion. Critics of Murray Murray's viewpoint accuse him of cultural insensitivity and Islamophobia, arguing that his critiques unfairly target Muslim women's personal choices and religious practices. They contend that such criticisms overlook the diversity of Muslim communities in Britain and reinforce stereotypes about Islam and Muslim integration. Don't we in this country, and in my country, Britain, we accommodate uh, religious expression. We yes. do make exceptions yes. for people. And there's nothing, uh, and that's what I so, thought. And we cannot destroy the country. minorities but, and the religious belief be a... in the name of equality. But we what have... if the majority feel uncomfortable, feel uneasy, and say they don't want to? I think then the onus is on us as well, isn't it? I mean, to, to actually reach out. And I, I'm hoping that this is just going one step towards that, to say to people, look, you know, we're human beings just like but, you. But if I may, I have to hold this. Course, religious freedom is an extremely important thing. I think most people who would agree, I hope in this yep. room, that Britain is the most tolerant place in the world to live, including as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, but let's just add one thing to this, if I may. The issue of social interaction is very important, and not just to me, but obviously to a majority of the British people. Yeah. What I say tonight, what Yasmin says and other people say tonight, people see our faces, they know who's saying it. I'm sorry to say this, but nobody knows who you are. They can hear your name, they can't see you. That's if I say something stupid on television tonight, people know it's me saying it. If you do, with all due respect, you can disappear and no meaning, one knows. No, we're not disappearing. What does this say? Here, come the on. meaning of this thing is extremely important to, to address. The meaning of this thing is women are by nature dangerous to not men and society. No, no, Therefore, no. they must be covered, they must be buried. That's the meaning of it. And that's what I cannot accept. I mean, Fatima, come back on exactly that point, because we have spoken to women who say that they cover their faces because they don't want to incite uh, passions among men. I mean, that is essentially Yasmin's point. Well, look, essentially, uh, I think, you know, that's Yasmin's opinion. No, it's not but my opinion. Yes, that it is. What it is, is your opinion? opinion. Yeah. Ask the Taliban. Ask Taliban no. why they're opposing <laughs> <you. laughs> <Yes, laughs> the Taliban, Taliban, Taliban here. Yasmin, Yasmin, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Maybe you haven't really met women in the car, but I would like to invite you out to my house. You know, you can see my face. We can sit together. <laughs> we can have a laugh. Yes, but and then I, I think it will change your, come, your opinion. Can come to your house and see your face, though, could he? Um, I can assure you I'm not going to be around. He could be my husband. He, he, <laughs> no, no, you're he welcome. Be. You would be welcome to, you know, come can to my I house. Hasan, husband, yeah, can I you ask? Can I mean, him. you used to wear yes, the niqab and then yep. changed yep. your mind. Why? Um, two main reasons. One was theological. I made some attempt to actually study the whole uh, notion of niqab in Islam, and I found that it's not actually mandatory. The hijab, the headscarf, is mandatory, but the niqab is not. It's part of um, Islamic society right from the beginning. But it's not mandatory. Just go and read a little bit of Ibn, Ibn Kathir, for example. Yeah, I'm, I'm a scholar in training, actually, uh, so I, I do second, know that. Sorry, let, and secondly, we have a social function in society. Mm. We are here to interact with society. We have to have a social consciousness. We have to benefit society. We have to interact with society. And I realized in those three years I was a nobody. Nobody wanted to talk to me because they couldn't talk to me. I could smile until the cows come home, but nobody could see me smiling. You see, that's a very good point, isn't it? Because you say you were a nobody. Yes. And yet many, many... Public opinion on the niqab in Britain is divided, reflecting broader debates about multiculturalism, identity politics and religious pluralism. Polls suggest varying degrees of support for banning face coverings like the niqab in certain public settings, with concerns about security, integration and gender equality playing significant roles in shaping public discourse and policy decisions. Douglas Murray's perspectives on the niqab have contributed to public discourse on multiculturalism
nationalism, immigration and national identity in Britain. His writings and media appearances have sparked debates about the limits of religious accommodation in secular societies and the balance between individual rights and societal norms. Many people in our poll disagreed with this notion that it was empowering in any way. And I bet you there were many Muslims in that survey. Most Muslims don't Yes, care I for this either. So, yeah. so to say British as if it was, you know, non-Muslims, most of us, but most of us don't speak out. When I do, I get death threats. I've had emails just this well, I, week I am from sorry. McCarthy, I am sorry. From That's McCarthy's wrong. calling me a prostitute. What is this freedom? that we have, no we, we can't even criticise what is not acceptable, you actually. You are free to criticise no, no, I mean, what do you make of that, 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 that making, a, as a, in a free democracy, making her views known and getting that sort that's of... That's fine, we're happy about it. I, I think the, the I issue that we... But about the response that she gets. Well, that's, oh, that's wrong, terrible. obviously. That's it's terrible. terrible. It's no, absolutely we, we terrible, it's not acceptable. Not, we, we should be able to discuss it, we should be able to talk about it, and I acknowledge that people no, feel uncomfortable. No, I think one of the problems is that the minute religion comes into it, what happens with the people who do wear the niqab often feel they are religiously superior and more pious no. than people no, Nobody has said that today. Nobody has said that today. Let me just move it out to the audience, if you would. Sophia, I'm right in saying you also used to wear the niqab, and you again decided not to. Yes. Why was that? The reason for that was that, I mean, that was a personal choice. I had an incident where a niqab was pulled off me and I, it, it really frightened me and I became very very anxious but I feel very strongly about some of the things that has been said here one of the things that you've been for example Yasmin you've said about you know freedom of speech and how people are threatening you I think that's completely unacceptable Islamically uh, you know we can't be responsible uh, for all the Muslims and for all the people around the world exactly. but I will say that just like you have the freedom of choice to express how you feel we have the freedom of choice I have a freedom of choice to not wear a niqab but and there she has a freedom of choice did to you wear a niqab that you were forced out out of wearing it, or did one you of the come to a different view about yeah, it? Yeah, one of the things I, I... It was a very personal choice for me. It meant a lot to me it's to not, wear the niqab. This is not shopping in Primark. This has a meaning, <laughs> and it's the meaning I'm arguing about. Yeah, but and actually, but, I, but that's the your meaning perception. that we're throwing... Let me you're explain to you the meaning, then. The suggestion of your argument, that but these that's women you, don't know that's, what no, their own choice is. That's your perception. They do know, absolutely do know, which is why I'm objecting to it. Jasmine, but that's your perception. You think that this is how you... I think I want to be very specific, if you would. You are a psychotherapist. Yes, I'm a psychotherapist. But you deal with women who are forced into wearing... The I, I know. I, I, I have, and I, another thing I would mention to uh, the, uh, you know uh, regarding communication. In the nine years of counselling uh, with Sakina Muslim Counselling that I, I do, all of my clients, majority of them are all phone. We do phone counselling, and and a lot of good work is done. I don't see their face. They don't see my face. So it's not really about looking at someone and really connecting with that person because we don't connect with the outer. We connect with the inner. So you think the loneliness that you talked about <laughs> seeing in these comes from where? And but, but, not a single. Person Person, not a single woman. Douglas Murray's perspective on the niqab intersects with broader discussions about cultural sensitivity and integration. While critics argue that Murray's views may perpetuate stereotypes or stigmatize Muslim women who choose to wear the niqab, his stance resonates with concerns about the societal implications of face covering garments. Has said to me, my husband has forced me to wear a niqab. What the issues they do have is regards to niqab. I am fearful to go out. I'm at home, I'm lonely, I'm depressed. I, I don't even want to go out because I feel like I'm not accepted. And the other thing I really want to express is that where is the humanity? You know, at the end of the day, you know, as a woman, as a, as a person, as a human being, where's my right to be who I am? This Ma is my identity. You have that right. That you have that right and you exercise it um, and so are all of the other ladies in this room. But the question is whether or not, and I, I would ask this of, of, I think, of everyone in the room who's covered, do you think that by covering your face from everyone else in society, you are exacerbating difference or, or, or making it less bad? Marian, would, would you any of you at that least recognise that you are, are you exacerbating, exacerbating a difference? Is okay, this divisive? Well, first and foremost, I think we need to look at human rights, OK? In 1998, there was the Human Rights uh, Convention, OK? Under Article 9, it specifically says, we all have the freedom of expression, we have the freedom of belief, we have the freedom of so many things that, you know, like in this country, but I thought great... Marian, like, on great Douglas I just, Murray's I... point, sorry, on Douglas Murray's point, that this is, you know, is, do you understand that many people feel this is divisive? It is a curtain between well, you and the rest of society. Well, to be quite frank, I think people are free to feel how they want. It doesn't, I don't but care I just, how you I feel. It's really, no, 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 wait. 
Really and truly, <laughs> it's about my human rights. My human right, I am allowed to cover. You I'm don't have to agree. Just very briefly on Could the I... point that, that many people in the survey said that they feel unease, they feel uncomfortable, they well, feel anxious. Well, to be anxious. quite frank, I feel like that towards emos, but well, that's can I, can all right. I just point out <laughs> well, can I just right? point out, there is something fundamentally ludicrous about somebody dressed as you are talking the language of modern human rights. Absolutely. What's a bit fundamentally oh, ludicrous. That's, that's in your mind. That's in your mind. Kola Hassan. This, this lady is constantly talking about rights. As a Muslim, you should know that responsibility is in there duty. as well. You have a responsibility to society around you. Exactly. I'm, I'm, a, just I'm a community organiser, I'm a scientist, I am engaged Majma. with the community, so I'm not point? isolated. You have a responsibility. I have, I don't Sorry, one isolated. second. You have a responsibility Sorry. in wider society. Well, obviously, obviously speaking, as a Muslim woman right now, you know, all this talk about there being no, uh, uh, there being a fear of us, well, fear stems from ignorance. For them to be fearful, they need to understand us and we need to understand them. Obviously, as British citizens, we do understand them. We were raised in British, school, British schools. We were, uh, some of us go to university here, we work here. We understand the British culture, but do you really understand the Islamic culture? But pardon me, you that's not the role. You can't possibly understand the British culture because there's been hundreds of years. And my mother's generation, because I too am a Muslim, my mother's generation, they were beaten, bullied and burnt because they wanted to get rid of all of this and be seen as proper equals. You're betraying that history and this country... From Murray's viewpoint, the niqab symbolises more than a religious garment. It represents a potential barrier to social cohesion. He argues that visible face coverings can complicate everyday interactions, hindering non-verbal communication and inhibiting social integration. This concern is particularly acute in public spaces such as schools, hospitals or courts where facial recognition and clear communication are crucial. We fought for hu well, we women's rights, everywhere. and you've now I'm taken sorry. us back to the I'm dark sorry. ages. I'm sorry, but can I just um, take it from Shabita? One, yes. um, you are, are a English. doctor yes. within and the NHS. Yeah, too. One second, yes. please. Yes. You are a doctor wait, within wait, the... Excuse me, can we all listen to each other? Um, you're a doctor in the NHS. Yes, I am. And obviously that is one of the very public places where a ban, you know, if it were to be considered, that... Well, first of all, I would like to say that calling for a ban uh, on niqab in NHS is um, actually uh, talking about an issue that does not really exist. Because uh, me and my friends, a lot of uh, have been contacting a lot of doctors all across the four countries of the United Kingdom, and none of them have ever come across a doctor who actually observed the face whale well within NHS or even a nurse. Exactly. So. Uh, um, I, I don't really see uh, uh, that why an issue that does not really exist is actually being addressed. Mm -hmm. There is no one or no doctor or a nurse who actually wears the niqab in NHS, just very, even very myself, that point, because... Though, isn't that an acknowledgement that there is a difficulty for many people that patients no, would find it's, it uncomfortable? No, it's not actually like that because I am not given a choice to wear it within NHS. When um, it's, I know it as a fact that if I wear my face well and go for, to a job interview, I will never be taken up for a job. How is it, how is it this, uh, to ask, you, you all here, how is it that you say it's an absolutely fundamental, you have to wear it, it's a right, it's a necessity upon you, but yet you say you go through an airport and it doesn't matter if you lift it. Is it so negotiable? In France, many of the women who said we, will, we cannot go out if we don't wear it have taken it off. Can I, can I yeah. just say, Shalina, you know, there is a place where we have the right to exercise our right. And if this was a school or a playground, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the bullies are winning here. There is a majority of people who have the um, power and resources to put out there an image about the niqab. I teach in schools and I... Murray's advocacy for restrictions on the niqab in certain public settings aligns with broader legal and policy debates in Britain. While the country upholds principles of religious freedom, it also recognises the need to balance individual rights with public safety and social harmony. The legality of face coverings in contexts like identification checks or courtroom testimonies has sparked legislative proposals and judicial decisions aimed at clarifying where religious freedoms intersect with societal norms. I said to a young bunch of group of, of children, I said to them, if somebody came into your school, a boy, and he had nail varnish on, and he had high heels on, you know, and you've seen him getting bullied, would you defend his right to be the way he was? Or would you ask him to change the way that he's dressed? Now, this is what I'm saying is, 
I said that I respected the fact that in context, you said in a courtroom, in the classroom, or in the in public settings mm. where there are people Shalit who have got Barry. mixed opinions, that we should have policies and procedures that control these things. But being in Britain, I'm Sh proud Shalina, to be British. Just very briefly, values. can I ask you, Sahar? That means I can many do, of the women, as much as I want to, many of the women who came am. forward to talk to us today, yeah. are very young. And actually, one of the questions that I think a lot of people ask is, you know, we've looked at Afghanistan and we've heard stories of women who have burnt the face veil and are terrified of the prospect of having to wear it again. Yeah. And they just don't understand how young women in Britain want to wear it here. Very briefly, if you can. Well, I started wearing the niqab at a young age, and the reason is, is after a research, it's a sp long spiritual journey, I found out that when I wear the niqab, I'll be closer to God, I'll be, uh, uh, I'll be is an act of worship, is an mm. act of modesty, and is liberating and dignifying. And since then, I've never changed my mind. And although, although my parents, uh, my, my mom, my sister, don't wear it. It's but, me. It's my personal choice. But yes, and in a free society, the opinions of other people also have to matter. Not, it's of not course, just about you exercising of your course, choice. The way other fine. people feel about that should be of some concern to but you. But you know, these a feelings woman are coming from naked. negative prejudices. We, we have are coming from You don't want men's opinions? No. No. You don't want men's opinions? No. I'm sorry. Okay, we are going to have to end it there. No, I'm really sorry. I the only man I'm sorry you don't want to hear men's opinions. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm afraid that is all we've got time for, though many more people wanted to... Critics and supporters alike discuss the niqab's implications for gender dynamics within Muslim communities and broader society. Murray raises questions about whether the niqab reinforces patriarchal norms or restricts women's autonomy and participation in public life. While some argue that wearing the niqab empowers women to assert their religious identity, others contend that it perpetuates gender inequality or restricts Restricts women's visibility and voice in public discourse. My guest tonight is a new conservative writer who's in the country for the Australian Think Inc. event Polarised alongside Dr. Cornel West. His book is The Strange Death of Europe, Immigration, Identity, Islam. We do have a problem. We have a problem when the failures of Islam throughout the world, the failures of all Islamic societies, come here into Britain. Their intolerance of freedom of conscience, their intolerance of apostates, their intolerance of freedom of expression and freedom uh, of speech. The truth is, the great disappointment of the last 14 years has been that civil society has failed, that um, we can't do the things to the Islamists that we would do, as I referred to, to the neo-Nazis. Please welcome Douglas Murray, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, Hi. Douglas. Thanks for coming on the show. I know you, you're very concerned about Western civilization. This show is technically part of the Western canon. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, the, de the decline in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a show. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. I uh, just need to make a disclaimer at the top. Myself and the executive producer of this program, Dan Illich, are involved in your tour with Dr. Corner West in the country. That was separate to the decision to book you on the show. We haven't been bribed into having a new conservative on the ABC, but I need to put that out there. Um, if people aren't familiar with your work, what, what is this strange death of Europe that you refer to? Um, well, for many years I've travelled um, as a reporter, as a journalist across the Third World and Middle East, Africa, many of the war zones of these areas, seen many of the places where people are fleeing from. And in 2015 I was reporting from across my continent, across Europe, uh, when people were coming in unprecedented numbers. We were talking about um, the German population taking in an additional 2% in a single year alone, where basically the German Chancellor said anyone who makes it to Europe can come. And uh, I did saw, the, saw all of this firsthand, and I realized that there was a catastrophe in the making, a catastrophe which I think has already started to unfold in the years since. I, I realized this is just a version of a problem that every country is having to think about. And we're very lucky countries, yours and mine. We're countries that people want to come to. And that isn't an easy thing to deal with, because we know that we cannot take in the world, and yet we can't have the conversation about what we can do. And I thought that we need to think about this much more deeply than we are. The political consequences of that decision sort of flowing through Germany and affecting Angela Merkel, some changes seem to be happening. They're trying to get more um, agreements with North African countries and looking at yeah. trying to return some people they, they to where they came from. they bribed Turkey. Right. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we, we already know some of the consequences. German elections saw a party that's generally described as far-right, the AFD, is now the main party of opposition in the German parliament. Uh, 
uh, unbelievable uh, social problems, unbelievable problems with freedom of expression. I mean, another data law just came in at the beginning of this year that tries to stop German citizens saying very critical things about their government on social media. And I, I just, you know, who, who could predict... The debate over the niqab reflects deeper tensions around multiculturalism and national identity in Britain. Murray's critiques challenge the notion that cultural diversity should always be accommodated without question, suggesting instead that integration and shared values are essential for social cohesion. This perspective resonates with concerns about the integration of immigrant communities and the preservation of British cultural norms amidst increasing diversity. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For more content like this, be sure to subscribe. What an interesting debate, what an interesting compilation. I think I totally agree with uh, the facts and the points Douglas have stated in this video and the facts and points Jasmine have also stated are also relate uh, with the reason the Muslim ladies have given of why they wear the niqab. And just like Douglas have said that the niqab should be banned in public places like courtrooms, like schools. So if not, to, if not banned generally, it should be banned in certain places. I totally agreed with Douglas on that point. And I believe that a lot of communication right now have to be face-to-face. -face. There's the need for people to see your face if they are communicating with you. So if you are smiling, they know when you are smiling. If you are frowning, they know you are frowning. If you are not okay with the way the conversation is going, they will understand all that just by looking at your facial expression. I understand the fact that uh, the British people, they promote freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of belief, freedom of religion, and they also promote multiculturalism. But I also understand the fact that when you are trying to express your freedom of belief or freedom or your rights at the expense of another person's rights, I believe that is totally unacceptable. If people are not comfortable with you, totally covering your face and just leaving your eyes, then you should do something about that. You shouldn't say a word like you don't care how other people feel, how other people feel that you cannot uh, displease yourself in order to please other people. You shouldn't say a word like that. If people are not okay with you covering yourself, if people feel uncomfortable, which means they won't be able to relate with you, you should... You know, adjust yourself to also accommodate what other people are, what other people think, so they can easily relate with you. You don't have to try to impose your own belief or impose your own religion on other people, which is what Douglas is trying to address in this video. People need to see your face in order to be able to come in order for communication to be able to go effectively. You know, sometimes uh, there, there are certain topics, there are certain things you want to discuss with people, but just by looking at their facial expression, you understand this is not the best time to discuss uh, this topic with this person. Maybe probably the person is frowning, the person is sick. Just by looking at the fa person's facial expression, you can tell that. But if the person is totally covered, there is no way you'll be able to know if it's the right time to communicate with the person. And even in schools, even in schools when a teacher is teaching, sometimes the teacher tend to look at uh, the student's facial expression to really tell if the students are understanding what she's teaching. You know, sometimes students or children might not be comfortable, might not be bold enough to ask the teacher a question if they are not understanding what the teacher is teaching. But if the teacher look at their facial expression, the teacher can tell oh, they are not following up with what I'm teaching, probably I should elaborate more on this topic so they'll understand me better. But if the student is totally covered, there's no way the teacher will be able to get that. So I believe if not totally banned, it should be banned, it should be banned in certain places like school, like courtroom, like hospitals, so people can easily relate with them. And I understand that uh, putting on the, the cap makes you comfortable. 
He draws you closer to Allah and it's a sign of modesty. I understand that. But you should also consider how other people feel about that. You should also consider how people relate with you. Just like the example she gave that uh, putting the niqab, when uh, putting the niqab uh, made the old woman living beside her, made even the children living beside her to be afraid just because they are afraid of what they cannot see. But if they are seeing you, I believe I see no reason why the, 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 uh, the kid will be afraid if the kid is seeing you. But because you are totally covered, they don't know if it's something else that is actually covered. And I would Muslim women feel if men also decide to start covering themselves, how, how would they feel? Or if everyone in the society decide to start covering themselves, how would, how would they feel? So I believe there's a need for us to try to understand each other. You don't need to exercise your rights, your freedom of speech, your freedom of belief at the expense of another. You have to also consider how other people feel so you know if they will be able to relate with you in such manner. Wow. I've really learned a lot just watching this video, listening to Douglas, listening to Jasmine and every one of the speaker. So I also like to hear your comments. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.